This is a Year 8 science lesson at Moore End Academy taught by Natalie Dallam. The ability range of the group is between levels 4 and 6. The lesson is about a balanced diet. The observer is Jeremy Richardson. So back of your books this needs to be answered in please Year 8. Um, it is a De Bono thinking tools again. It's a cap. Consider all factors. And the question is, McDonald's have been criticised for being the official sponsor of the London 2012 Olympics. Do you think that they should be allowed to sponsor such a big sporting event? Now, a sponsor, um, for example, McDonald's, what they'll do, they'll give the Olympics a lot of money um, so their brand can be advertised during the Olympics. So that's what a sponsor does. It gives a lot of money to whoever they're sponsoring so their brand can be advertised. Now, Amir Khan, you might know him, boxer. He was a boxer in the Olympics, last, um, the last Olympics, and he won a silver medal, I believe. And he said, McDonald's are clearly sending out the wrong signals to kids and young people. So, what I want you to do, I want you to answer this question. Do you think that they should be allowed to sponsor such a big sporting event? Now, considering all factors, I want you to think about the good things about sponsoring the, them sponsoring the Olympics, and maybe the things that you think aren't so good about them sponsoring the Olympics. So I'm going to let you do that now. I'm going to take the register while you're doing that, Year 8. So, question was, do you think they should be allowed to sponsor such a big sporting event? Talking about McDonald's here. So let's have... Um, Ali, what do you think, please? I think they shouldn't be able to sponsor big events like Olympic because McDonald's sells ready-made food which contains a lot of fat and are that healthy, healthy to eat. Fantastic, so McDonald's sell a lot of food that contain a lot of fat, so you don't think they should sponsor a sporting event. Does anyone think anything else about that? Does everyone agree with Ali? Does anyone think that they should um, be allowed to sponsor such a big event? Let's have Ikra at the back, please. Uh, I think that they should um, be allowed to do that because they give money and they, um, they, ra they raise the um, money for the Olympics and they're promoting, prom promoting their company too. Good. So they're doing two things, promoting the company but they're giving money to, for the Olympics and that allows quite a lot of athletes to actually take part in the Olympics. So we're going to move on to talk about our lesson objectives today. So understand why a balanced diet is important for good health. So level four, name the five main food groups and give an example. Level five, describe which foods contain the most energy. Um, and also give an example of a balanced meal. Level six, explain why a balanced diet is important for a person's health. And also level six, be able to link um, diets to a person's lifestyle. Okay, so that's what we're gonna look at in today's lesson. Keywords for today, thought they're on this interactive whiteboard, but also on the whiteboard to your left. Just want to have a look at those. So they'll be up for the remainder of the lesson. Jewels, balanced diet, energy, correlation, obesity, type 2 diabetes and heart disease. They're your key words for today. Recap then. So this is looking back at last lesson. Last lesson, I've got some over here. You made, um, you worked in groups, so you were team workers, and we looked at the different food groups, and you put the foods that they're found in, so you have some examples of those foods, and what they're actually used for. So let's see if we can remember them. Back of your books, write them down please. Five main food groups. I want at least one example for each food group of a food, please, that contains that. Come on aside, back of your books, please. Five main food groups. I'll give an example of a food they found in, please. Right, so in front of you on your desk. You should have some sheets like this, a table with a list of foods, okay? In your exercise books, I would like you to write down these foods in order of fat content. So I want you to think about which one of these foods contains the most fat, all the way down to which of these foods contains the least fat. So you should have an order of nine different foods, all on the list, from high fat to low fat. Okay, do we all understand? So for example, if I thought biscuits contain the most amount of fat, that would be top of my list. 
the most fat. And then what other food comes after that that I think contains the next um, largest amount of fat? Okay? So can we do that now? I'm going to give you a few minutes to do that. So write the list in your books. They're in front of you on the sheet. So all you need these sheets. And I want you to write them in order. It doesn't matter if you get it wrong. I want, to, I want to know what you think about these types of food and whether they contain how much fat they actually contain. The list them, the, yeah. ones, the ones that are the ones that got the most fat in go on the top. The ones that got the least fat in goes right at the bottom. Okay. And you think chocolate's got the most fat. What, what are you using to work that out? Is that something you looked at before or how do, how do you know to put chocolate at the top? Is it, is it like a guess or...? Yes, I'm guessing. You're guessing. Okay. And, and on what basis are you making your guess? What you may need to think about is what food groups some of these foods belong to. Yeah. That may help you. Because that does seem quite sensible to me. Those look like pretty good guesses. I'm just wondering how you did it. Sounds like pretty good, doesn't it? Why are you doing that? Okay. Because this, this got the most food because most of the people have them. Okay. And biscuits is the same. Okay. And crisp people have them too. And bread has got lots of carbohydrates in it. Okay. So you're looking about what other food groups you know in the, the thing there, aren't you? Yeah. That's great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have you worked yours out? Yeah. How did you do it? Well, I thought that chicken is in carbohydrates, so that wouldn't really have much. Okay. So that I put like in the middle and then biscuits because that's kind of like chocolate so I put that first. So you put those quite high? Yeah. Do you know what level you're working at in science? A 5A. A 5A. And what's your target? Do you know what your target is? My target's 5A. So you're already at your target? Yeah. That's really good, isn't it? Is that, how do you find the work quite difficult or fairly easy? How, how do you find it? It's a bit easier and a bit hard. It's a bit easier and a bit hard. Yeah. So it depends on the lesson. Yeah. And what, how do you find this topic? It's, it's kind of easy and a bit hard. Okay. So it's a bit of a mixture. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Have you got your, can I have a look at your book?
How would I find that out? Let's have Uzmi. When you get a packet of crispy, it tells you how much fat it's got on seaweed chocolate. Where does it tell you that? At the back. Good. Okay, what you may realise if you look at the back of some of the food that you actually eat, we have food labels and they tell us all about the, the nutrition um, contained in that food that you're actually eating. So, what we have now are some food labels that I've actually laminated of all these different foods here. Again, okay, so I'm going to put a few on each desk and what I want you to do, using um, this chart I've given you the table, I want you to fill in as well. Fill in um, how much fat there is per 100 grams. So if you look on the back of some of the foods I've um, laminated, you will see it. And it will say per 100 grams. You need to look in that column. Okay? So I'll put a few out. So Joe, where are you looking? Yes, if you look here, can you see where it says per 100 grams? You're going to look down there. So where it says fat, you need to look there. Oh, what, biscuits? So, let's just, let's just get this right. Could this work on food? Yes. Do you know what your, you, you think your target's oh, yeah, a six? Oh, yeah, 100 grams per bed, so it's 13.8 grams. Six Oh, yeah. These um, the my target is 5A. Your target was 5A in your planner. Yeah. And do you know what you're working at now? Also, um, 6B, I think. Because I've got 6C and latest. That's really good. So, what you're working at now is above your target. You've exceeded your target. That's fantastic. Do you get a report? Have you had a report that has told you that? Right, that's great. So what's been your favourite topic in science? Light and sound. What was it you liked about them? It was interesting to find out different facts. Okay. How did you find the facts out? What sort of things did you do? Can you remember? Was it too long ago? I looked in books and um, they showed us some lessons. Have you got Chris? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So far, so far. The most fat so far? Um, the crisp. It's crisp. So how does that compare with what the uh, person put up earlier on in the lesson? So I, think, um, I think it's... I think she did well because she put that first. Yeah, well and so did you. You put that first, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yes, So you're good at science? Yes, so I'm all right. You're all right? Yeah. So what do you know what level you're working at in science? Uh, I think the target grade is like six. That's my target grade, but I think I'm working at like level five B or something. Okay. And how do you know that? Because uh, we did that last lesson. And we were sorting out like stuff, like our uh, assessments that we've done and stuff like that. Oh, right. okay. Thank you. Right. For those of you who have finished, not talking over you, me, mate. You should have got these values in your table. Could you just check and make sure that you've got the correct values? I've gone round and made sure you all look at the correct column. You're just missing a couple, aren't you? Yeah, sad. They're on there. The biscuits are there. We'll put those in a minute. So, the next thing I want you to do now, so you should have your list, you should have your values in your table. I want you to compare. I want you to put them in order, should we say. Um, you can see the values, which one has the most fat. So, for example, up in here, I can see Chris has 33 grams of fat per 100 grams. So I can see straight away, Chris contained the most fat. Okay, so does it agree with your early prediction when you wrote your list? Remember you wrote your list? Oh, going the wrong way. Remember you wrote your list earlier in your book? What you do now is compare that list to the actual... Um, real fat values. Do they 
agree with your original prediction, or they're totally dissimilar, they're not, nothing like what you've, um, the order that you had them in. Have a think about why. Why did you put them in that order? So is anyone surprised that bits, that crisps of it, are top of the list? This is a bit dull. From what I saw when I walked around, quite a lot of you had chicken and fish quite high up for, your, for the fat content. If you look now, fish is quite low down. Uh, um, chicken's, um, it's, very, it's in the middle chicken really, isn't it? So, why do you think it's a lot different to your um, original prediction? Can anyone tell me why they think theirs might be different to what the actual fat content is? So, Asad, you had, which one did you have? So I thought like fish was third because I thought like it's gonna be like in top five because it's oily in it. So I thought like it might have been there because a lot of oils in it and oil got a lot of fat in it. Good, but there are um, good oils and there are bad oils. So fish oil is, is usually we say it's a good oil, it's good for us, okay? But it still is. If you will look at the fish, it still has quite a bit of fat in it, doesn't it? Seven point eight grams. And you've got a third column in your table that is blank. I want you now to write in energy per 100 grams, brackets, kilojoules. So energy, um, the unit to measure energy is joules. That's one of our key words today. What you'll see is different. I've got kilojoules there. And that's because your food contains so much energy, we can't write a really big number. There won't be enough space. So we use kilojoules. So 1,000 joules is 1 kilojoule. Kind of like when we um, measure your height, we don't measure it in centimetres, do we measure it in metres? So otherwise there's quite a lot of centimetres we're going to use, isn't it? So, energy here is in kilojoules. It just means a thousand joules is one kilojoule. So that's one of our key words. What we need to do now is have a look at the energy content. So energy per 100 grams. So before you looked where it said fat, now I want you to look where it says energy, please, and I want you to write the values down in that table. So can we do that now, please? We're not going to give you too long for this. What does kilo mean in kilojoules? Like a thousand joules, like energy. So you're writing energy as a thousand joules in every... Yeah, well, it says kilojoules. Per 100 grams. Per 100 grams. What, what, what are you learning in this lesson? Well, it would... Like fat, like the fats in groups. <laughs> You're learning about fats in groups. What, if, if you do well in this lesson, what will you achieve? What will you have to do to do really well in this lesson? Uh, to uh, achieve a level six. Like, like, not right, you Ray, I'm going to yeah. stop you there. I'm actually going to show you the values in this table. What will you have to do to get level six? Down. Can you remember? Describe it. And like, what kind of food? Uh, Could you check your values? But I'm not, I'm the values in the table. So if you can put that down now. We're done with the food labels. Can we copy down the, en the energy that um, put 100 grams on the board? I've actually done that for you. What I want you to think about. So on the board, do you notice a correlation? Can you see a link between the amount of fat that there is in food and the energy provided by that food? Okay, have a look. So the values are on the board there for you. And Ali, I want you to think about cornflakes has high energy, it's a high energy food, but it has a low fat content. Why do you think that is? Look at all the others in your table. So coming round to put some keyword maps on your desk is going to help with next activity we do. I'm going to ask in a minute. Right. So does anyone notice a correlation or a link? Can anyone tell me, please? Can anyone see a link between the amount of fat in food and the energy provided by food? 
So for example, have a look at crisp and have a look at biscuits and then have a look at fish. So let's have Sophie up then. Most of the foods with high energy contents are carbohydrates. Okay, good. What about the fat? Do they have a lot of fat in them then? Mm. The ones that are high energy? Some of them do. Some of them do, don't they? Fantastic. Um, what about then chicken? Chicken has 13.8 grams of fat, which is quite a high value for chicken. That's because it's a, the one I've given you is a chicken dipper, it's fried in batter. Um, and it has a highish energy value. Compare that to sweet corn, for example. Well, actually, we'll say cornflakes. 0.9, so cornflakes is a carbohydrate that you were talking about, Sophia. But it had an energy content of 1604, which is quite high. All the others that have low fat content have quite a low energy. So why do you think that is? Have it go down the route of you with the carbohydrates. Let's look at the ones you said were carbohydrates before. So crisp and biscuits, carbohydrates. And cornflakes comes under carbohydrates. But why has that got less fat than the other two? Because it's high in fat. The crisp biscuits gets high in fat. Why is that? Why is cornflakes not really high in fat then? Does it contain more sugar? Good. Which one? Um, cornflakes. Cornflakes contains more sugar. Than no, crisp I mean crisps. Crisp and, and biscuits. biscuits. Good. Remember we looked at carbohydrates. We said we split them into two: ones with sugars and ones with that starchy. God, I saw you move your mouth there, Chris, um, Sophia. So cornflakes. Do you think that's a sugary carbohydrate or a starchy one? Is it a starchy one? What? Good, it is a starchy one. So it has less energy. I mean, less fat, sorry, let's get that right. It's less fat. So the, what, the carbohydrates that are very sugary have a higher fat content than the carbohydrates that are starchy that have a lower fat content. So that's why you have to choose carefully which carbohydrates you're going to eat. No, you don't need to write the question down, just write the answer, 20, please. 20, 20. Level five. Level five. What, what level are you currently working at? Oh, okay. You're level five now and you're going to try and do level five on so Yeah. Right, okay. Have you got your book then? Your book? It's at the front. Oh, right, okay. Do you know what this lesson is about? What, what, what are you learning in this lesson? Um, it's about the different types of fat. Do you know what this lesson is about? What, what, what are you learning in this lesson? Um, different about different foods and um, about the so different the energies of the Okay. Different foods and different energy. Yeah, I moved it. Yeah. 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 Are you enjoying it? Yes. Yeah? I like this thing. What, what do you like? Um, that different people can participate. Right, okay. So different people are able to participate. Yes. Because you got to go up and put all the things on at front, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. How, how did you feel doing that? Do you do that often in lessons? Do you go up to the front and show yeah. people things? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And do you often do that in science lessons? You get the opportunity to do that. Yeah, yeah. we do on the smart board. You do them on the smart board. Yeah. Oh, what do you move things around on the smart board? Yeah, we write our answers on the smart board. Oh, I see. Can I have a look at your book? I'm sorry, so I know I'm holding you up from your work. That's okay. So this is your last thing. This is a different topic. What is this topic on? Um, about light and sound. I like the sound. And how long have you been doing this new topic? It's just started. Just started? Yeah. Did you enjoy light and sound? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. What, was there something, what, can you tell me something that you did in it that was really good that you remember? Um, we learnt, um, we did like the diagrams and how light is, um, how light can change. Right, okay. Right, thank you very much. I won't distract you anymore. Thank you. So, we've looked at foods now. Oh, I'm going backwards again. So, it's important to eat a wide variety of food. We call this a balanced diet. Now, if you look on your keyword maps, that word's on there as well, ba balanced diet. So, it's eating a variety of foods, not just lots of fat, not just lots of fibre, lots of different types of food, a variety. So, different people need different amounts of food. So athletes, for example, they need more energy. So they're going to need more food than just, say, me, for example, because I don't really do much exercise. And you're going to need more food if 
you are a boy. Boys need to eat a bit more than girls. Okay, you might see it on the back of the package. It says daily allowance for men and for women. You're supposed to eat different amounts. Men need a bit more. So, what we're going to do, we're going to come on to an extended writing question. Before we do that, can anyone remember in the video what they said about eating, not eating the right foods and eating foods that are too high in fat? What did they say some of the health problems could be? Um, let's have ICRA, please. They said that you can get diabetes or cancer. Good. Diabetes was one I heard and cancer was another. Diabetes, your body needs to control the um, level of sugar in the body. When it doesn't, um, if you're eating too unhealthily, your body's not able to do that. So you've got a risk of diabetes there. Um, Sophia? A risk of death. A risk of death, yes, eventually. There's one more thing that I said on that um, video. Courtney, please. Heart disease. Heart disease. Eventually your heart muscles don't get enough oxygen, so the, your heart doesn't work as well. So, we've looked at some of those. Now, clean it in. You've got an extended writing question. So the question is, you're going to be independent inquiries here, that's our PLTs. So, why is it important for us to eat a balanced diet? So, I've helped you out here, um, telling you what you need to do to achieve each level. Level four, you should be able to state the different types of food groups, giving some examples of them. Level five, describe what a balanced diet is and give an example of a balanced meal. And give examples of foods high in energy and high in fat. So we know that we've just done that with our um, food labels, haven't we? And a level six um, answer, you will explain. Can you see the difference between level six and level...